Hey, Hans again from Request for Music, and let me go on where I left off with this sequence. And um, I'm going to see if I can do it a bit different. So I'm uh, I'm going to stop this, and you can hear that everything is is uh, hooked up that way by using that controller. So um, let's say that I wanted this to be at a slower speed, so to speak, so I can drive it every time it does that, and I'm going to this at a different speed as well. So I'm going to take this back to 30. So that means that this sequence is only driven um, once each time and I could actually also have, yeah, let me try that first. So if I use my uh, 60 still, but I'm going to drive it by using the full 16 steps, it takes obviously longer before getting back to, to that. So First of all, let's do that, reset that, reset this one, reset that one, and drive. So that's better. I don't like the speed for this sequence, so I'll see if I can do something about that because I actually want sort of a double speed for this. So if, I if instead I'm going to drive this as well by using that once thing, so I'll stop again, and, um, and you can hear that it was still running this because it run through the full sequence because it already received its gate, which means that it's going to drive it by its own speed. So if I'm going to um, take this out first, just to uh, because I want this to be at double speed. Now it was at 60, so I want 120 for this. something like this going on so that means that I'm uh, I'm going to drive that from an accent as well um, so take this in and um, use this um, reset that one reset this reset that and run this <laughs> Okay, um, so it does that, but maybe the only problem is that, of course, it's only driving it once. Um, I could perhaps try to do something else this way. Um, I could, for instance, if I if I don't want to to change the way that the sequence is working, I might try to do something like um, drive the pitch from the pause because uh, and. It's just because I wanted to try and show you multiple modules that I've created. I have this pause kind of thing, and it could actually take, for instance, um, let's say if I can, can take the pitch out of this, and I could try to take the, the gate out of this, so I'm using two inputs, and um, I was at 120, so Maybe I could do something like two seconds or something, or one second here, and uh, see what, what works for that. I can take this output here and and take this into my pitch. And well, actually, I I do like what is what is going on. It's it's driving my filter in a sort of strange way, but I could even try to take my gates straight into this uh, timbre modulation and see what it does. Uh, I mean, that's the whole thing about modulars. You just try around, you just drag everything in and, and something works or it doesn't. Um, 
because now I'm actually driving the uh, the filter with whatever comes out of this sequence. But okay, it's it's good for now. I I just have something and I'll I'll leave it as is. Um, for the rest, obviously, I need some kind of melody, and maybe I want some noise going around um, that I want to low frequency modulate or something. So I'll take the uh, noise out here and I'll use yeah. Let's just put an extra LFO in there and I'll put a blank um, here. Put a blank in there and I'll put a blank in here because. This is going to be my noise background, noise background. So, background, to the right of this, and this is going to be my end chain, so to speak. So, so. Because that's where where I decide how my signal is divided over the stereo field going through delay and going through reverb. So I have this, and uh, I want a filter for that. Oops. I want a filter going here, and I want some noise going there. I'll probably have to zoom in a bit for you guys to see. So. Um, I'm taking the uh, white noise out and I'm putting that into the input of my filter and I'll take this into something here and uh, so it's already mixed in and obviously I want to just do something like this and um, sure I could do something like take the LFO out and do the straightaways Let's let's just first do that. So I'll take this into um, um, I could do it into the timbre modulation. So if I dial this up, this is going to be side. But I feel if I want some more control over this, I might want to use a mixer before going into the VCF. So I'll do something like this. I won't go straight away, but use it like this. And maybe I'll just put another triangle on that and take this out. Um, because then I have a modulated signal and I can decide how much this modulates, so to speak. So let's take this up. So I've got my first low uh, speed frequency and I've got another one on top. And the depth of that second one can be used by this. And it might even be nice to um, to sort of pan this over uh, the stereo image, and I could do that by modulating this. And it might be nice to do that in the same speed as the first one, but this has already been mixed, so let's take the same output into the second mixer and take that into my panning. And you can hear it's starting to pan now from the left to the right side. And the depth you can now control from this mix setting here. So we've got something I'll go on like that and maybe put this back into the background again. So, what do we have? We have a controller, a controller driving the bass, and not only the bass, but also some sort of melody. The bass is getting into the first banner uh, input, the melody is going into the second, and uh, that means that I can put the pan for this a bit more to the 
to the right if I wanted to. The noise is coming into the third input, being driven by all of this. I've got my output setting, so if I want more, more delay in this, I can put that in that way. And obviously this is a pretty long delay, but I, I like those atmospheric sounds, so I'll do it that way, and obviously the... Uh, the sound for the uh, for the bass can be uh, changed from this ADSR and that BCF connection. So and if I wanted to change the sequence on this, I could, for instance, just try what does it do when I just put up those some of those uh, points out. And just try out, because this was being switched by uh, shift key, and then click on those, and just see what it does. And then obviously what I really need is some kind of lead sound to go over all of this. So, what I need, let's say that I um, put um, an extra cabinet in there and, and take all of those um, sort of master things out and put those there so I can put my actual lead there so I could use a blank plate again to put in here and make sure this is uh, auto-aligned left. And, um, again. So, I'm going to, to put my lead in here. So lead. And for the lead, I'll um, I'll need a VCO, at least one, to um, to put that in there. I need an ADSR. I need a filter, and it's up to you how to to place that. Um, I could think of as the ADSR being one of the first things to to put in there so I could put it there and uh, and I need obviously a pitch to go into my external input of the VCO again use my gate again to drive that ADSR open when a gate is relieved and then take the envelope out into the VCF and take this in this output of the VCO into this um, so that should do it as soon as I put that in. Maybe I want the actual melody to have, or the lead that I'm going to play, maybe I want that to have more delay even. So let's uh, let's first of all see what it does and uh, then think what we can go do further. So now I've got uh, just a sine wave uh, being on in there. Let's put a sawtooth. No, let's let's use a square wave because a square wave can be modulated, pulse width modulated. So. So now I could do something like this, and obviously I need different sort of sounds, so I might use some longer decay and bit of lead. Something like this. And because I want slightly thicker sound, I'll uh, probably take an LFO in here as well and use the LFO to drive the pulse width modulation of this and the depth and the speed. Um, the depth obviously decides how much uh, it's going to do, the depth together with the uh, LFO speed. If I speed this up, it's going to sound... So do something like that maybe. And uh, as said, I probably want some more delay in that and um, so I could actually take the delay straight into this area as well because that's part of my lead sound. So instead of going to, um, to the panner straight from the VCF, 
I'm going to take it from the output there, but the thing is that this is a stereo module, so instead I'm going to take the other one out there as well, so like going into this, and because it's a stereo signal, I need to pan it to full left and full right, and um, now the only thing, of course, is that I need to take my output of my filter in here and switch this on, otherwise I don't have anything. I probably need to put my take this off and I'm going to give it a longer longer delay and maybe some more feedback even and drive it a bit back in the and it needs less volume. With that, I can just go on and look at all of the outputs. I need some more of that second sound, for instance, that melody sound. And uh, maybe I need some more of the bass, or maybe some more of that second tune that was coming out, and the second tone was coming out of the timbre modulation, and the actual bass was in here. Some more of the uh, of the lead sound now. But now maybe um, maybe I would actually like to. Uh, and I think the other sound can be can be a little bit softer. Um, maybe I like to have a next VCO in this, so I'll uh, copy that VCO in there as well to have that create sound. Obviously, I need to take my pitch from my pitch. Uh, output from the CV source into that VCO, but I'm not going to do it straight away because um, I like some glide in there. So I'll take my glide in, take my input for my glide out of the pitch, and put the output of that glide into that second VCO. And I want actually that second VCO to be higher up. So I'll take that up there. And obviously, I forgot to take this into my filter. So I'll do something like that and uh, I'll drive it back just slightly but give it some more glide. That's a bit too much. Yes, something like that probably, and um, obviously I could go on for hours like that playing, and just maybe 
add some elements to it if I wanted because now uh, there's only this first melody coming on on the left uh, sorry on the right in the channel maybe I wanted some some other on the left as well I could obviously just copy this one over to the right have it driven by the controller as well and maybe uh, at a higher speed take a shorter element so well let's do that just to close this off so I'll take this, uh, this whole part copy it over so I got my second melody on it again. Um, it of course needs all of the, those connections so um, I need my uh, my input to drive it from the sequencer and I'll just play around with these then and I'll need it as double I think that I put it up to 240 just to be sure that I have that possibility so I'll take that and uh, yeah let's just first of all open some stuff up so I'm going to take that uh, gate output and I, I don't even need to really look at that I know by now that this is that a input which I'm taking from here so now this sequence will be driven every time it reaches that and I will uh, I will need some some other connections. Oops, sorry about that. I will need some other connection because I need my uh, gate for this to drive the ADSR for this. I need my pitch to be driven from that and my envelope globe out of the ADSR and my signal going in there and I'll take this into the panner um, overview. So where was the panner again? There was the panner that I'm going to do. So I'll take this output here and I'll put that put that in. Well, it's not really that important. Let's take it to the bottom. So it is already doing that now. The only thing is that it's not driving the proper note. So and uh, and this is really running at a, at a high speed at the moment. Maybe I could take it down again. So let's put it at 120 again. Take some less notes. Take a different kind of sound. And I could even try to uh, just transpose this. And maybe if I um, if I didn't want this, maybe I could actually sort of delay this by to play again.
And again, I could uh, go on for ages. I could do so much. I could use my percussion module to put in there to create extra percussion in there. But I think, um, yeah, this sort of shows you at least what you can do. And as soon as I switch my controller off, it will run through all of those sequences with one more and then stop. So, um, as said, that's probably the main way of handling. The only thing that it doesn't control, obviously, is my noise, which is still going go there uh, and going through. And so I could then fade out that one by using my output level to, to go to an absolute halt. And um, yeah, that's it, I think. So I'll stop my recording here and I'll get back into the next one. So cheers. Bye-bye.